Hey everybody, it's me, Shell, still mostly known as the Purple Gimp, and holy crap, it's been a really, really long time. I, gosh, I really don't even know where to start. So much has happened since um, gosh, episode seven, so that would make this, uh, episode number eight in my disability video blog series. Um, before the, I don't even know what to call it, before, um, my hamster wheel just kind of fell apart altogether. Um, as some of you who watched my earlier episodes may remember, um, I was down to 13 teeth because of the Sjogren's disease. And was suffering from excruciating and life-threatening bone marrow infections um, in my jaw because of the repeated untreated oral infections and my teeth were shattering like glass and um, even with being blessed with insurance uh, my insurance company didn't want to cover my surgery even though I, I met all of the qualifying conditions and I continued to get sicker and sicker battling it out with them um, to try and, and get some care and interviewed uh, quite a few doctors uh, along the way to discuss the, the various options uh, available to me and the general consensus was that I needed a full mouth extraction and grafts into my upper and lower jaw on both sides to strengthen the bone so that I could receive dental implants and it was truly a, a, a nightmare process and a huge blow to my self-confidence and self-esteem. I had to learn how to talk differently so that people couldn't see how many broken teeth that I had. and learn not to show my teeth when I smiled and covered my mouth when I laughed and just generally felt really disgusting and so uh, to make a long story short um, my father was kind enough to step in um, when things got really really scary and offered to pay for my surgery which at, at that point was about fifty five thousand dollars to have my teeth extracted have my own bone used to graft in to the implant sites all the way through my upper and lower jaw um, and then to have uh, implants reconstructed from uh, pictures of my old smile before I got sick years ago so that the teeth, new teeth, would look like my old teeth used to look. So, um, 
little over a, a year, year and a half ago, I found a wonderful prosthodontist and oral surgeon who were a team here together. And I had a surgery, all of my teeth extracted, and the implant posts set along with grafts in, in all of the implant sites from my own bone and or um, temporary teeth basically um, for uh, about six or seven months while the new bone grew around the, the implants and the old bone kind of uh, absorbed it all so that it got really strong to be able to hold my new teeth. Um, and then, uh, not this September, but last September, I went and got my new choppers. And I can eat apples now and carrots. Um, I can smile again and laugh again without feeling self-conscious. Um, and I had to relearn how to do all of those things because I had spent so many years training myself not to. So that was really huge. And um, I'm, I'm super grateful that that aspect of my medical challenges is finally laid to rest. It, it was a, it was and is still another whole blow to be 41 years old and have all of your teeth yanked out. Um, and the permanent implants do have their drawbacks and food gets stuck up in the plates um, in, in between where the gum and, and the teeth are. And so I have to brush my teeth a lot and water pick a lot and rinse a lot. Um, but it's certainly a thousand times better than the nightmare that I was living with before. Um, and I know that a lot of Sjogren's patients uh, are, are facing the same kind of issues with the freakishly rapid tooth decay. I think that was a tweet. Um, and the, the dry mouth that Sjogren's causes just makes that so much worse. And the way that our healthcare system is set up, you know, even with dental insurance, which we also had, um, procedures like that just aren't covered or they cover hardly anything um, or you, you have no dent dental insurance at all and you know who, who has th that kind of money laying around to even stay on top of the rapid tooth decay when it starts and that was my problem it, it just got worse and worse and worse because I, I couldn't afford to do anything about it and it, all happened so quickly over a matter of you know years so if you know if you're facing these issues try to find a, a, a dentist that that understands Sjogren's disease and how it affects the mouth I, I was really shocked to see that there were very few dentists and, and prosthodontics out there um, that were intimately familiar with, with Sjogren's disease and how it affected the mouth. And uh, I certainly had more than one dentist, you know, in the beginning trying to find the right one that, that even made me feel like, like I had done something wrong to you know, cause all of my teeth to 
to splinter and, and break at such a young age. Like, you know, I was some, some secret meth addict or something in my spare time. It, it was... It was really an uncomfortable feeling. So don't be afraid to ask when you call for an appointment. If, if the doctor has got experience with Sjogren's disease and if they have to get with the doctor and, and ask them that question and call you back and let you know before you even make the appointment, you know, make them jump through those hoops because it'll make a huge difference in the, the quality of care that you get if you've got somebody that, that understands um, what's really happening. So, and as many of you, you remember, I um, also lost my best friend and soul sister, Jennifer, to pancreatic cancer. Um, right around the time that the last video was filmed and the lack of, of, of compassionate care that, that she received in the end of her life, which stole ultimately the end of her life from her, really, um, did a number on 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 me and I, I was was so angry for so long that it was more important for the rehab facility to save a few dollars on the front end because Medicaid takes so long to reimburse that they were willing to take away all of her pain medications because they were too expensive despite the fact that they were prescribed by her her pain doctor prior to transfer to hospice and instead replaced them with with three dollar a dose methadone which it was clearly marked in her file that she was allergic to but again you know this invisible bottom line was somehow more important than the end of her life in a facility that is supposed to be geared around providing some sort of quality and comfort at the end of her life. And so to lose her without anyone even being able to say goodbye to her without her even realizing that her end had been stolen away was really difficult for me for a really long time. And I got involved in activism here on a local level trying to raise awareness and be some sort of useful to make it all make some sort of sense and somewhere in there I just kept getting sicker and, and sicker until I could rarely leave the house anymore and am down more than I'm up. I'm seeing some new doctors and trying to, to get some new answers and trying desperately to find myself again and remind myself that I have things still to give 
and that I do matter and there is a point to all of this even if it doesn't make sense to me right now and I want to thank those of you that wrote me letters and posted me comments on my videos asking where I was and just remembering that I existed and sharing your own stories with me and letting me know how hearing my story affected all of you. It, words can't express how much all of that meant to me. Anthony and, and Morgan and everybody else that was wonderful to know that at least on some level I was able to to reach out to where you are and remind you that you're not alone that we're all we're all fighting this battle together and it really sucks but we all still have value and we all still matter and sometimes just being reminded of that is everything so thank you for your support and thank you for your views and thank you for encouraging me to come back despite the trolls and the some of the hateful comments and um, observations that I perceived I wouldn't be sitting here again now if it wasn't for all of you so thanks for giving me the strength to put myself out there again and talk about all of the things that we as patients as fighters as survivors as people have to deal with because our illnesses may be invisible to a lot of the people around us but they're not invisible to us and so many people in our lives can say that they understand but unless you've lived it you can't really understand and so many of us even myself work so hard to hide so much of our pain and our sickness from the people that love us because we don't want to be a drain and we don't want to be the one that complains all the time and so we hide it and we stuff it and stuff it and stuff it and keep going and keep going and keep going and it's good to have somewhere that you can let it out and not be judged and let it out and be understood and I'm glad I'm back so I'll be talking about applying for disability and, and how that process works uh, I went through that roller coaster ride myself, and it's a super frustrating, long, drawn out, bureaucratic, amazingly crappy process. But um, it can be done, and I've gotten a few uh, letters in my absence asking uh, 
how how people go about filing disability and what the process is like and what you can do to speed things along and what some of these things mean um, when they happen during the process. So uh, I'll be talking about that in upcoming episodes and also want to touch on the the epidemic of untreated chronic pain patients um, not just in our country but um, in other countries around the world and, and the stigma that's that's become attached to uh, managing chronic chronic pain so I've got lots of things to share and I appreciate each and every one of you um, sharing your time with me and wherever you are just remember that you're still not alone so thanks again and I look forward to seeing you all again soon bye